On Power Rangers, being a superhero, we often have to fight evil or bad people. And, uh, you know, it seems to be a story that's always been involved in the world that we live in right now. So there's always good and there's always evil. Every part is a part, you know. There's good guys, there's bad guys. Most people have a little of both inside them. You know, quite often they're the more interesting part to play, the more meaty part. In any story is, is, is connected to several elements. And one of those elements is the protagonist and the antagonist. And usually the element of the antagonist is usually the bad guy. But in any way, I never look at as, as, a, as someone entering or accepting a role and begin to work and develop a role. I never think of it as, from the standpoint of being good or bad. Well, all of my pictures are a dialectic. Uh, it's, it's good versus evil. That's positive versus negative. That's where the drama is. That's where the dynamic action comes from. But it's exploring really uh, what we are as human beings. We love stories because we identify with characters. Sometimes we even identify with the bad guy if we can understand where he's coming from, what motivates him, uh, what motivates the good guys. Uh, I'm one uh, who, uh, when he creates a story, I, I take the point of view that there is actually good and evil. So I do work these things out beforehand. But it's about personality too, and what happens to a person as well as what they believe in. And I'm not talking about persons so much, I'm talking about characters that I create. I have to create what they believe in, and it might not even be what I believe in. For example, I'll draw a vampire. You don't have to be a vampire in order to draw a vampire. I have to imagine somehow a personality, and, and I have to uh, get into that role. Uh, Biff, he was a good guy. Now, sometimes he can be a little mean. He gave me like noogies and stuff. He picked on me all the time throughout the whole movie, grabbed me, threw me around, but he was a good guy. It was very important for him to be in that movie. If we didn't have him, it wouldn't be Back to the Future. He's an idiot. <laughs> he has got the biggest ego in any Back to the Future bad guy ever. Whether it's Biff Tannen, Griff Tannen, or Mad Dog Tanny, he's just the bit. The Tannins are are the worst, worst characters in the movie. The significance of the, that character actually builds the the McFly family up. Whether it's you know Marty's dad getting picked on by him, or Marty's son in the future getting picked on by his, his grandson or whatnot, or the you know the older Tannin picking on you know the younger you know the younger generation of the McFlys is just. The tan in the family actually helps the McFly family build confidence in themselves. I think that Tom Wilson did an amazing job at Biff, and the character was mean and tough, but he wasn't evil, sinister. It was goofy evil. You still loved him, and I think the best characters who are playing the bad guys are characters you can still love. I can't really comment much on Biff. I wish he was here himself. He should be doing these shows. Um, but he was, a, he was a good bad guy, if you know what I mean. Awesome. And when I say he's a good bad guy, he's really a good guy playing a bad guy. Just like me, I'm, I'm sort of a good guy, but I'm pretty much a bad guy. Depending, you know, depending on my mood. Wow. Really? Hey. The winner. The villain. 50-50. What are you today? I'm going to go with Hero. I don't want to get hit with a hammer. The villain has always been the prime character since the Bible. The, you got Satan against Jesus in the, in the desert. So yeah, I think the villain is uh, our darker side, if you want to put a uh, personal note or a uh, psychological spin on it. The villains are usually someone who uh, feels he's disenfranchised or feels somehow he's been violated or who's living in fear. Bad guys are the best guys to play because they're the most interesting, they're the most creative, you gotta think a lot. Hey, a good guy, you just gotta be, you know, cute and smile. Bad guys, you can limp, you can have stutters, you can do anything. That's creativity, and that's what all actors want. I reflect on the villain uh, as somebody that's usually somebody that's lost. You know, he's uh, there's always a character that's that's he's he's got circumstances that have created that have created him to a villain. Like there's something that made him become bad, or made him become the person that. Uh, 
that wants to hurt other people, whether that was he was hurt by himself or he's uh, insecure or there's something. There's it's not bad people are not bad people just because they're bad people. There's circumstances involved that made them want to be that way. I've uh, as an actor, I played a villain before. I mean, I've been a superhero as a ranger, and then I've been a villain as well. Like, I've been somebody that, that wanted to do bad things to bad um, to people, and um, and there's always a reason why. So it's interesting. But, you know, without uh, a villain, you can't be a hero. Any favorite bad guys? Us. 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 Yeah, my favorite bad guys are Bulk and Skull. Yeah. In season one and two. Yeah. <laughs> As long as there's humor and there's, uh... Once again, Amy Biden, Thomas Gilleran, please Hey, come. I'm talking here, shut up! Thomas Gilleran, Amy as long as there's humor and there's no malice and there's no, uh, no one gets uh, maligned in a way that's, that's uh, mean-spirited, I think evil is, is, a, is, is fun and entertaining. People always say, okay, your, your characters changed so much over the years, and, and in some ways they didn't. I mean, they were always idiots, I think. I mean, their super objector changed from being bullies to, uh, you know, junior detectives and detectives and police and stuff like that. But I think, overall, the characters didn't change. No, not really. They just wanted to be loved. That's all they wanted. And that's, maybe that's what it was. The first season, you didn't realize that aggression was a cry for attention and love. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're pathetic characters. We're the everyman characters. Yep. Every man, every man characters. So we are the... That's the thing about comedy, though. I mean, you know, good slapstick comedy is supposed to be kind of like the average, uh, you know, schmo can't get a leg up on the world, and so they do things that are stupid and that usually backfires. Right? That, yeah, that's true, yeah. I mean, um... I think the characters definitely evolved into something more than they were originally simply by uh, virtue of the long period of time that we spent playing them. Yeah. You know, because face it, if we wouldn't have been able to evolve the characters, I mean, certainly we would have said, go fuck yourself. Yeah, we would have said and, that. And, and quit. And I mean, quit, I, I, yeah. So. No, I agree. It made it interesting. Yeah. So we didn't tell anyone to fuck themselves and quit. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Simon Fisherbecker, better known to many of you as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who. And for those of you who don't know what I look like, that's me. <laughs> and people are very um, wary of Dorian because they're not too sure whether he's a goodie or a baddie. I think that he's a bad goodie. And that deep down, He's probably got some soul inside him, but he works in the murky side of society. I'm a good guy at heart, and I, I really usually don't play bad guys, but I'm taking this role as a bad guy, and I'm kind of turning it into um, a little bit of a neutral guy instead of just bad guys. But me personally, you, you definitely need to have the balance of good and evil, otherwise there's no real interest of the story. There's a saying in show business, the snake has all the lines. In other words, the bad guy usually has the better part, the more interesting part. And if you're an actor, it's a lot more fun. And then if you're really a good guy, and you get to play a bad guy, it's even more interesting, you know what I mean? As for good and evil in games and films and programs and entertainment, you've got to have the contrast so that you can have a story. Now, whether people take to heart a story as being true or not, that's totally up to them. I'm a firm believer you cannot blame entertainment for all that is bad in the world. Education, education, education is all that's required. Don't blame the entertainers. You're watching the same movies, the same television across the border in Canada as we have here in the United States, but their rate of crime and, and uh, violent crimes in particular is not as high as ours, even given the population difference. So it must be something about the Canadian culture that grounds them and makes them uh, more solid through life as opposed to uh, our own culture. And I love my country, don't get me wrong, but let's face it, in light of the shootings that we've had recently, most recently is yesterday, in LAX, the airport, I got a grant, I got a son who lives in Los Angeles, a filmmaker, and he has to travel quite a bit. So of course, I'm concerned, as a grandfather I'm concerned, it's, um, it's a cultural difference, I believe. We, this is a culture, we gotta remember, we came out of the Old West, you know? Uh, 
I think it still carries over to today, the proliferation of guns, etc. It's not a good thing. You know, during World War II, I don't care. we had more patriotism. <laughs> the comic book heroes showed it, the people showed it, and we don't see it today. So sad. So sad that the patriotism we had here in the United States, the greatest country in the world, has gone to into a position where we are so divided that I want to cry. During the Second World War, we were united. And united we stand, divided we fall. That was a slogan in the 40s. So I still have hope that this country will come together. Hopefully, in real life, we can learn to let go of evil, and let go of bad, and let go of fear, let go of war, let go of the need to dominate, uh, let go of greed, and uh, just really embrace who we really are, and understand that we're all equal, and that we all have a right to be on this planet together, and live in harmony. I'm just awesome. Look at kind of, kind of just me. like dicks. Yeah. I'm just amazing, is what I am. <laughs> if you know this, like, it's on my card. It's, it's Deadpool, amazing. Dick. Right and then it's got a picture of my face because people love my face. Yeah, it's very. You be quiet. <laughs> Don't talk about my face. It makes me cry. The boils and everything. Oh, it's it's Look, it's it, the healing factor's not perfect, but it works better than yours. Is this about the eye again? Is it? <laughs> Eye yeah, you want eyed freak. Very You're like a pirate. Arg! Look at you. Is it a, a really well armed pirate who looks a little bit like me, and that's why people like them? Yeah, whatever. So after playing good guys for years and years, you know, with Good Times and the other series, I finally got to play what a lot of people perceived as a bad guy in Die Hard 2. When we flipped the script, when my character cut the throat of the young soldier, it was an audible gasp from the audience because it's the first time they've seen JJ's daddy do anything of that nature. And I did play the bad guy in there, but I told people I was not a bad guy. I was a misguided patriot. But it was a lot of fun playing something that the audience didn't anticipate and hearing their reaction. It can be fun, and as an actor, I want to be as diversified as possible. Good guy, bad guy, in between, everything. I love cosplaying as villains because it lets me be dark and creepy and evil, and because I'm actually cute like a little kitten and really sweet, so I get to bring out my dark side and be a little bit angry. Watching movies and watching the villains and being the villain, it's just like, I don't know, there's just something so like dark and like enticing about it. You know what I mean? It's always my favorite role. There's always, uh, my favorite characters are always the villain. I don't know. And, and there's something about, like, I, I had a tough time growing up, and so, like, there's something about being the guy no one likes that is just attractive to me. Well, the best villains think they're heroes, so you need to have somebody who's relatable, has something you can kind of agree with. Tends to be a little more believable when you're the villain. Antiquated senses of justice and morality just don't cut it anymore. I think sometimes people like to emulate characters that are in films or in television, so if there's evil or bad guys on television or film, sometimes kids or other people can emulate it and think that that's cool. Um, I think we should emulate good guys. For an actor, a bad guy is, is, is a, you know, it's just plainly more fun. It's more fun to play a bad guy. You get to reach down into places that you don't get to do in life. And, uh, um, you know, bad guys are, are uh, they're just more exciting for an actor to play. Uh, I don't think Goldar is a traditional bad guy, even though he's, you know, I think Goldar is actually more of a caricature as opposed to a, uh, you know, a, a, a true blue bad guy, even though he was badder in the beginning, which I preferred. Um, then he got a little goofy, which, you know, I got to roll with it. But, you know, you got to have a bad guy. It's, 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 it's standard storytelling, you know? I mean, where do you go with all good, good guys? People knew me during that first show as someone who was pretty manipulative, and I guess I'd use the word evil. And uh, it's not how I treat people in real life. It's not uh, who I am. What it is, how I would play that game to win, and did. So, you know, uh, evil, 
is really about perception and reality television, unscripted drama, if you will, is kind of a, a peek into who we are as people. And you can ask yourself, how would you play? What would you do? What are your limits? How would you work within the rules of that game like you would in football or chess? You're not gonna tell your opponent what you're doing. I just think there are so many more levels to a bad guy. Don't you? You know, he's struggling with so many things, uh, internal things and pain and anger and all of those things that we, you know, in this life, we, to whatever degree we're all struggling with those things, society insists that we pat those down, that we don't, don't, you know, you're so angry, you need anger management, this, that, the other, and, you know, so a true badass, you know, I mean, look at the Penguin in, in Batman and the Joker. I mean, they're complex, complicated characters. For an actor, there's a lot more you get to play. A good guy, I mean, how much do you get to play as a good guy? Let me see, good and evil. Well, you know, uh, the way I portray them, uh, I found by doing the Santa character as both the good Santa, uh, where... You know, basically, he doesn't smoke, doesn't cuss, doesn't drink. I mean, he's a perfect example for children. And he's a kind and basically a very innocent and childlike fellow himself. Wise, but but still innocent. And, um, and you know, and of course, that character is loved and, uh, and a good example for children. But then I do the evil vampire Santa. He's not really evil. I mean, you can't call a snake evil just because it, e it bites and, and eats uh, other animals. That's what they do to survive. Vampires aren't evil. They just have to drink blood. So uh, what I do is I find that it's not a, a, an image that I want to give to children. So my vampire Santa really only comes out in adult venues. And that's the thing is he's, uh, he's a fun-loving, uh, womanizing, uh, neck-biting bastard, but everybody loves him uh, because deep down inside he may be bad, but he's not really evil. You know, the dark side is a part of, of this life that we live. And ultimately, the best character of all the characters is the anti-hero. You know, the, the, the good guy who's, uh, you know, who basically says, you know, F you to everything and everybody because he exposes the lie or the lies, if you will, and so somehow we're pulling for him, i.e. Walter White in Breaking Bad. You know, how in the world do we root for a freaking uh, meth maker? Because he's an anti-hero, because society stepped all over him, because he's trying to do the right thing by being a good science teacher, and finally, you know, he's getting knocked around in his second job at a car wash, and he says, I'm done. And so we're pulling for the underdog. And that's why I think actually the anti-hero is the most exciting character of all. You know, the anti-hero has always been some, uh, the specialty of the American, you know. You know, there's, there, there's a part of, of all of us, you know, that wants to do the right thing no matter what, you know. What is right is right. And uh, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. The anti-hero has always lived, um, you know, there are times when he rises again. You know, I suppose there's more injustice going on right now and, you know, and so the anti-hero lives. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it's part of our culture. If there's not an enemy, there's no force or reason for there to be, you know, good. Or there's no reason for everybody to unite, you know? And uh, I think that's really what Power Rangers is about in, in, in general, was teamwork, you know? And we had to come together to beat the bad guys and, you know, we, we, we sort of like any, put, a, put aside any differences we might have had uh, just to, uh, to kind of defeat the common enemy, so to speak. For me, as an actor, uh, it was always interesting to play a superhero that was always fighting to save the world and fighting to save people's lives when you really think about uh, the big scope of things. Um, 
So it was just interesting that there's always, they were always trying to create monsters. Uh, every episode, a different monster to try to destroy us or destroy the world. And uh, the good people, the Power Rangers, uh, always morphed and we always saved the world. Thankfully, at least in my belief, good always triumphs over evil. So love will always win over fear. A character simply wants something or feels that they need something, you know, within the context of the story. And that happens. And the, sto the story is, is always, for whether it's the protagonist or the antagonist, also often has some sort of revelation. And the most important thing is the thing is, what is the revelation? What, what is the journey for e either one of these two elements within the story? The comic book creator, if you're drawing and writing your own stuff, but even if you're just drawing your stuff, you're drawing your work, uh, you have to, it, for it to have soul, power, uh, that's, that certain magic that, that, that is conveyed in your art, and uh, that goes into the reader's head, and, and it comes to life in a certain way. Something of that magic that's in the movies, where everything works and you feel like, wow, I really had a tremendous experience. That took me somewhere. That made me feel this and that. That that told me this this information, or or made me realize how wondrous it is to be a human being. What what the human experience is, or you know, a, a piece of it, a picture of it. As far as playing the villain in Superman, you know, we did it to where somebody had to relate to children so I did it like a mindless like a child learning how to walk and talk and uh, and there's this huge man that has so much power and strength and to have a, a child like mine because someone like I said had to relate to the children in the audience and Sarah was vicious Terence was vicious so I took my character and used it as a as, as a young child you know, and it worked very well. See, I, I don't think you need to go dark, dark, dark to to portray uh, a villain or a bad guy. Everybody has their characteristics and walk down the street in life. And uh, the truism is much better for me than to try to make it so dark that uh, people get it's beyond belief. You know, and it depends on the on the on the script and stuff that you're doing as to where the character comes from, what he's supposed to be doing and where he's supposed to wind up. And to create a character that people can relate to with believability. Well, I like to put the heavy shadow on it. You know, I like to put that uh, a, a dramatic lighting. Uh, not that they're saying that they're evil or that they have a dark side. It's more of just a dramatic pose and dramatic lighting. More for effect than, uh, than the feeling itself. The Devil May Cry series, uh, the Sparta was a demon shut off the devil world. Dante and Virgil are his sons. Virgil goes the dark way, ends up going with corruption and trying to take his father's power. Like Virgil does the bad shit. Dante turns around and is like, I have all of this power. I might as well make a buck off of it. And he does mercenary jobs. That doesn't make him a bad guy. It doesn't make, well, certainly doesn't make him a good guy. He's more or less just an asshole who gets money from the good guys for doing things that they can't. The enemy in this storyline is basically a fire that she has to face. There is no enemy, so you don't always have an enemy in a story. It could be other forces. I really liked dragons a lot as a kid, and I, I never thought... I knew they were supposed to be evil and bad, but I thought that... Um, I thought that they were more misunderstood. My idea of a dragon is this thing that has a lot of potential, like this infinite potential, and it could be powerful and scary, or it could be insanely cute and playful and fun and, you know, something that you want to hang out with and be friends with. It really depends on what side you're on and, um, you know, how far you're willing to go to understand something better. Well, the most people would thought Mr. Mr. Or, or Albert in The Color Purple was a bad guy. But in, in the process of doing Mr. In, in The Color Purple, there's something else that happens also. He's also an evolving human being. So that he has a, 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 a what I call a revelation, which is personal, but in some sense has some sort of universality to it. You know, because it's the, the evolution that happens that I think is an important part of the story. That happens, that evolution coincides with 
the protagonist in this sense would be Seeley's evolution. Because the bad guy who survived, like the Red Skull and the Joker and the Batman, they were the good guys as far as the publisher was concerned because they brought in money. They don't die. If they died, so would the publisher. So all I can say is bless the villains and cheers for the heroes.